Welcome to this week's Ask EMBN show and I've roped in a special guest for you this week. This is Henry from GMBN Tech. Ooh, yeah. He is an ex World Cup mechanic so he really knows his stuff. So it's going to be a hell of a show with this guy involved. So let's get into it. Sweet, so the first question mm -hmm. is from Matt Lloyd. I actually went to school with a guy called Matt Lloyd. So this Matt Lloyd? I'm assuming. You know, <laughs> there can't be more than two. Matt's not a common name. Definitely not. Lloyd, never heard it before. <laughs> Bound to be the same guy. How you doing, bud? <laughs> so, I ride fast in an area mm -hmm. with a lot of rocks hidden in the grass as well as some deep rutted trails. Right. And I get a number of pedal strikes. Mm -hmm. I'm looking into EMTB. How well do motors stand this? Well, I think the motors themselves are pretty sturdy these days. You know, I've smacked my motor quite hard getting up like big rocks and things like that. So the actual motor itself is pretty sturdy, but it's things the same as a standard mountain bike, to be fair. Um, if you hit an e-bike e crank on a big rock, it's going to bend as will it, you know, on a standard mountain bike. So there's no difference in that. Obviously, with um, the e-mountain bike, it's obviously a little bit heavy. So you really want to think about your suspension settings, make sure the bike's not sagging too much into its travel, because then you will get a lot more pedal strikes. But as we've talked about before, it's all about planning your lines and thinking about where you're pedaling, um, things like that really. With e-bikes, is there perhaps a, an element of um, you want, if, if you were to take a massive strike on the crank, yeah. you'd actually want to break the crank mm -hmm. to sacrifice that part as yeah. opposed to passing it on to the motor. motor. Shaft, yeah, yeah. Um, maybe if you had some ultra burly mm. stiff cranks on there, yeah, it yeah. might actually it could damage motor spin on itself. Yeah. A bit like how your collarbone breaks to stop yourself stabbing, in, stabbing yourself in your neck. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> it's a bit yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, same sort of thing. But you know, I've put my motor through a lot of grief and I've not had any you know problems yet. Mm. So I think, yeah, you'd be fine to be fair. No problems with it whatsoever. Oh, that's pretty cool. So now we've got a question from Paul Suckler. Mm -hmm. And he says, are we likely to see integrated motor and gearbox anytime soon? No derailleur or roll-off required. So kind of all, all yeah. meshed together. So all meshed together. Um, it's definitely something that needs to do, and I think the derailleur is definitely Stone Age technology on these new school bikes. Um, but we have seen people like Continental do it already. They do a 48 volt system, which oh, wow. has a built-in gearbox and motor all together. Uh, Mubea bikes have actually done that as well. They've been working on an early prototype and Cavello Quartz as well. They've done a 14 speed motor and uh, gearbox all combined. Only, so, only. How come yeah. you guys get all the good stuff? Over yeah, where's, cool. like literally in modern mountain biking world, everyone says, mm -hmm. oh my God, we need gearboxes. And somebody who make like Zeroed, yeah. make a bike with the gearbox, especially mm -hmm. the G2 downhill bike. Mm -hmm. Everyone's like, no, it's crap. <laughs> oh, <laughs> or like, Everything looks like a track session makes a bike that doesn't look like a track session. Exactly. It looks weird. <laughs> I think maybe with e-bikes, because yeah. there's been a divergence from the accepted norms, mm -hmm people are a lot more excited about this and ex embrace this tech Definitely. a bit more. Yeah, that's like, pretty cool. And I think the reason that um, a lot of people still use obviously derailleur and a chain and cassette is obviously because it's the most efficient. Mm. And then obviously with a motor it added to that mix. And I think there is that step to progress with gearboxes. And you know, you might have a little bit more resistance in a gearbox, but you've got the motor to yes. overcome that. So I and, know it's that balance. And also don't you think it's absurd that me and, and traditionally a non e-cyclist, mm. e-bicyclist, mm -hmm. as I believe you fair yourself to us, that I, with my two bloody cocktail legs, yeah. putting out about two watts, can wear a drivetrain. Yeah. Like, think of aeroplanes. Exactly. They're not replacing it every <laughs> thousand K, are they? Do you know it, what is what I mean? definitely, it is a massive weak spot at yeah, the moment that definitely, definitely needs peculiar. some work doing in the e bike world. But yeah, hopefully it's all coming on its yeah. way. Before we deconstruct the transmission industry too much, <laughs> let's get into another question. Eh? And this is from Ala Tusul. Ala? Yeah, let's go for that. And he says, Hi, guys. Mm -hmm. I need to see somebody doing a manual on a size medium Levo Expert 29. You know, seeing is believing for him, I think. Now, basically, it seems to, for him to be too front heavy. Right. He has tried and tried. Would love to see you guys showing it how easy it is on this bike. Mm. Now, what's your opinion on this? Well, I'd count manual for toffee. So. Can you not? Yeah, wrong person to ask. No, come <laughs> off it now. No, um, I think when it comes to an e-bike manual, obviously you've got the battery and the down tube and obviously the motor down low. So there is quite an art, especially if you're coming from a standard mountain bike to an e-bike, to an e it is quite an effort. Mm -hmm. But it's exactly the same technique as you would do on a standard mountain bike, but you just need to be a bit more explosive and a lot more, every movement is exaggerated basically. So mm -hmm. pull up is like twice, three times as hard as you would do on a normal mountain bike. Um, but it's exactly the same technique. Once it's actually there, I find an e-bike quite 
easier to manual yeah. than a regular bike. I think the stability of it is quite is quite a good point. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, definitely total, totally possible on a Levo. You shouldn't struggle at all. It's just getting it. I think you need to actually loop out a few times. But we've done a video on this about all the manual beginners' mistakes. So check this one out. Now, one of the biggest mistakes I see a lot of riders when they come into manual is not doing a bit of suspension preload before they go into that manual position. It doesn't necessarily lift the front wheel. What it does is actually put a lot of energy into the bike suspension. When you combine it with that weight shift down and back up with a little bit of suspension preload, it's going to put a lot of energy into the bike and that front wheel is going to pop up. So that's, you know, pretty comprehensive way to do it, I suppose. Yeah, it's look pretty good. I think it's, it's, as I said, it's super easy once you get into it and just learning where those balance points are, but you're going to crash, so just stick at it. Yeah, nice. Now we have a question from Samo Cooper, mm -hmm. and he says, I have a 2017 XL Focus Jarifa? 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 Yeah, which is kind of like I suppose it's not an ultra burly no. bike, is it? No, it's a standard kind of quite an entry level hardtail on that oh, cool. bike. Oh, so, right. yeah. And he's he's a reasonably heavy rider. How far can he push it? Should I be considering jumps I can do on trails, or is this just asking too much? Mm. I mean, straight off the bat, I'd say it's good at least you're thinking about this. Yeah. Sometimes you see people on really like entry level mountain bikes like. I can do anything. <laughs> Let's go huck my yeah, meat. And you're yeah, just yeah. like, ah, yeah. you know? No, definitely. I think it's good to have a bit of reservation in one in your skills and two in your bike as mm -hmm. well. Um, but I had a quick look at the bike and it looks like a standard kind of entry level e mountain bike, which of course is going to be fairly capable on normal like fire roads and basic off road trails. Um, I think if you're going to step it up a little bit more, then I think it's probably worth upgrading those contact points, right? Yes, I'd say so. Mm -hmm. I mean, something like a wider bar and a shorter stem. Yeah. Also, I mean, a, a good thing from, especially with e-bikes, because of the added weight. Mm. If you're riding smooth trails, it's not so much of an issue, but repeated compressions mm. for a heavy rider on the back wheel yeah. could actually damage your rim. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you know, for me, I could take a cross-country bike and put some downhill tires on it, yeah. and it would become hugely capable. Mm -hmm. Similarly, I could get a downhill bike and put some really lightweight cross-country tires on, and it would kind of take the legs from underneath it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And I think that cockpit's really important, mm -hmm. but even putting a, a decent casing, aggressively treaded tire yeah. on the back, mm -hmm. just, and you'll be amazed at how much it will damp the trail for you. Definitely, yeah. Um, so and a lot of tires. Yeah, a lot of time you get on a downhill bike and you think, oh my God, this is silent. And it's actually the, the tire is pranging less, you know, like, yeah, bing, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's just, mm, yeah. and um, tires, I'd say, is a really good one as Definitely, well. Definitely, yeah, so tires, contact points, so seat, pedals, bars, mm -hmm. um, grips, things like that. Um, yeah, just take it steady, and hopefully your riding's gonna progress, and if you find yourself outgrowing that bike, then you might wanna look towards maybe a full suspension bike mm -hmm. if you're looking at more technical trails. We've done a video all about hardtail versus full suspension as well, let's play it now. Time to ramp things up, time to go even further off road, more rocks, more routes. Yeah, but what about if you don't even ride this tech like single track trails, climbs and things like that? Look, if you don't do that, if you ride just roads and fire roads all day, then you can get a sub thousand pound hardtail with a, with a hub drive motor, job done. It'll give you immense pleasure. Yeah, exactly, that immense pleasure. Do you remember that immense pleasure you had riding up Snowden on that hub drive, uh, hub gear thing? That wasn't much fun, was yeah, it? Yeah, the problem with hub drive bikes is they just bounce everywhere, don't they? All yeah. that weight is in the rear wheel. Not good when you're riding technical off-road situations, those bikes, yeah. at all. I mean, I guess a mid-drive motor is gonna be way better, mm -hmm. even compared to a mid to a hub drive uh, bike and stuff like this, right? Definitely, yeah. Hardtail or full suspension, yeah. doesn't matter. So now we've got a question from Brian Burnham. Mm -hmm. And immediately, I'm actually noticing a difference with the EMTB. All ours are like, you know, Rude Boys 79. That's oh, the, right. the user account. <laughs> we get first and second name. Nice, isn't it? A different level of clientele it's on EMTB. Audience. Rarified air. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, now that I am fully into e-biking, mm -hmm. I find myself going places that are farther and harder to get to than I'm used to on a normal bike. Right. Because of this, I end up in areas where the trail isn't as well used. Mm -hmm. I notice my shins are turning into a horror film from all the branches and scrub oak. I don't want full body armor type shin guards due to my area being close to 100 degrees. Any lightweight trail socks with tear resistant material? Mm. 
I mean, what do you reckon? Maybe just smear some margarine on yourself? Is that what you do? Cover yourself yeah, in margarine? Just is get it? a pack of butter, just up and down, <laughs> mate. It'll be gliding straight off you, impervious to scars then. <laughs> but it is an issue, eh? Yeah, definitely. Um, just literally last week when I was out for a ride, um, it was a really hot day in a, here in England, the sort of bushes and all mm -hmm. the trails are pretty overgrown at the minute. So it is definitely something I suffered from. I, I thought, oh, I won't wear gloves and I'd come back. My hands are totally shredded, my forearms, you know, yeah. from brambles and thorns. And I spent the next three days picking thorns out my hands and cuts and things like that. So I wish I just stuck on a set of gloves. And I think, especially with your legs, um, I tend to just run a set of trousers. I know you're going to sweat and it's going to be a lot hotter, but I prefer that just for that hour or so of, you know, mm -hmm. inconvenience, a couple of hours, however long your ride is, just to wear that rather than the three yeah. days of suffering from I, cuts and thorns. And I find it's funny because I'm going through, yeah, a really similar process, mm -hmm. having lived in New Zealand and France mm -hmm. going between summers. Yeah. I forgot brambles even existed. <laughs> and I've come back to the UK this summer yeah. being cut to ribbons. Yeah. Like, oh my god, I've just got I'm like pinstriped, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's the worst feeling, isn't it? I think when you get that bramble try to grab hold of it and you feel it <laughs> running yeah. it before I'm like, ah, ah, trying to like I've been riding through trails literally holding the whole stem. Yeah. Air like, tucking. Through, yeah, yeah. So just trying to escape. But. I find wearing sometimes wearing like a nice really breathable jersey, mm. it actually the brambles hook in the holes, yeah. so a, a cotton t-shirt is less, well you're less worried about it being, potentially being damaged because yeah. it's, it's a cheaper item mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. and it doesn't snag on stuff so no, easily. Exactly. Um, sometimes actually in UK trail centres, and it's, I don't know, it's, it, perhaps the kind of approach to it is like, I'm going to do an outdoor, outdoor, outdoor sport, no matter what time of year, I'm going to put on football socks, <laughs> just knee and shin baby, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but maybe it could work, Yeah. because that's actually quite like a, in some ways some of the, some of them are almost mm -hmm. A kind of plasticky sort of fabric, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. And they could maybe slide off. Yeah, so I think maybe like a decent length sock that you potentially could roll up if the trail is going to get mm. a bit more overgrown. And then when it, you know, the trail allows maybe like the fire roads and stuff, you can roll the sock yeah, back totally. down. But obviously there is some bike specific like makes out there, Endura, Defeat, DHB, and I think yeah. Fox do some good ones as yes. well. So it's getting some moto socks maybe. Big long ones. Or borrow your stockings from your missus maybe. Bam. Problem <laughs> solved. Forward thinking Chris Smith. <laughs> Can you remember when 661 used to do those veggie guards? Veggie guards? Which were just the shin, but yeah. no knee. Oh, I do. For, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. for somebody that thinks, no, nah, that'd be too sensible. <laughs> Take it back half a turn. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely remarkable piece of kit. <laughs> I think they're mainly for trials riders, but you would imagine. see people on trails. <laughs> anyway, and continuing with the questions, we've got one from Darren Dawson. Mm -hmm. And he says, I've just bought a Focus Jam 2 online, yeah. but it feels slightly too small. Mm. Is there anything I can do to make the bike fit me a bit better? So it's feeling too small. Right? Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm presuming in terms of reach. Reach and be. things like that. So starting with the obvious, you could obviously put a longer stem on there, mm -hmm. uh, slide the uh, saddle back in the rails as well, might give mm -hmm. you a little bit more room in the cockpit. Um, bigger bars that you can slightly roll forward, it's going to give you a little bit more as well. Any other yeah. tips? Um, it depends how you're doing on, on front end height. Mm -hmm. If you think of it as your the way your angles are, so your steerer tube isn't on exactly vertical axis. Yeah. So the higher your bars are, mm -hmm. the fur, the closer they've come to you. Okay. Similarly, yeah. the lower they are. I mean, you obviously don't want to be uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Also, yeah, with your saddle, the getting actually a good fit in terms of your saddle height. Some people ride with their saddle too low. Yeah. Like way too low. Mm -hmm and then they feel like they're really close to the bike. Right, actually, yeah. the, the, if you actually have your saddle, mm -hmm. make sure it's at the correct height, yeah. it will take you further away from that mm -hmm. bar, a bit. Yeah, and um, of course, I think it's also worth bearing in mind about the actual seat post you're using as well, because some mm -hmm. of those are actually, on top of the seat post, you get an inline clamp, but some of mm -hmm. them, on the, particularly if you've got, a, I don't know if you've got a dropper, I, I, did you say? It doesn't say no. But if you've got a dropper or a, a standard seat post, you can get like a slight laid back seat post as well, so that might add a little bit more room on the mm -hmm. cockpit as well. Do you know what I mean? Not like yes, totally. the old school, the like, yeah, yeah, like a yeah. slightly different offset on that, so that could be something you can maybe purchase, might give you a little bit more, but yeah. apart from that, I think, I think, yeah, but you, if it's, it is difficult, and if, mm. I mean, it says you, you've just got it. Um, so speak to the people you got them from. You do usually get two weeks yeah. to actually, and if it is, I mean, if you weigh out, mm -hmm. you know, but I think there's actually a, a large trend and a conversation happening within the bike industry where everyone's going to bigger bikes. Yeah. Bigger, bigger, bigger. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people still prefer a smaller bike, mm. you know. I, still, I run, yeah, traditionally I should be on an XL, but I yeah. tend to run large on a lot of my bikes. Yeah. People try and get me on an XL, mm. and I'm, I'm, I'm six foot on the nose, and to yeah. me, mm. that's an intimidating prospect. Exactly, yeah, it's a big old um, bike, so. So yeah, just, you know, see, yeah. see how you get on. Yeah. 
next we have a question from Sean Murray. Mm -hmm. And he says, what do you think of the new motor in the Specialized Turbo Oreo? Oreo. Will it come? Creo. Oh yeah, so you are. Yeah, no, the Creo. Biscuits. It does look, I mean, you know, that, I reckon that was a typo there and now they're trying to, you know, smooth it out. <laughs> okay, so the Specialized Turbo Creo, will it, will it come to a mountain bike? It looks perfect for me and I hope the next Kinevo have it. Well, so, you know, what with the new Specialized Turbo Creo, mm -hmm. what are some of the characteristics of that bike? Um, well, the new motor and the Creo, Specialized has been working on that motor and batteries for around three years, so oh, put wow. a lot of time into it, and it is really cool. It's like 1.95 kilos, so it's super light, super one light. of the lightest bottom bracket mounted motors. Um, and it's got zero resistance above the limiter, so it's designed for the oh, Creo wow. to be ridden turned off. Yeah. So there's literally, if you go above that limiter with assistance, you're gonna feel no drag in the system. Um, and it says that you've been testing a few bikes out mm -hmm. um, and you're finding that there's a bit too much. Too assisted. And just too assisted, yeah. Seems like a waste. So obviously on those bikes, um, especially as Specialized and any bike with Shimano motors, you can actually go onto the app and dial down the assistance even in Eco from like 1% up Bloody to 100%. Teeth. So you can actually, work in, eh? yeah, so you can actually, oh. you know, if you're saying it's got too much assistance even in Eco, you could pretty much turn it off in eco by going to 1% and work your way up. So I suggest trying those bikes out um, and see how you go with the assistance from them. You're never gonna have too much assistance and you can always ride it turned off if you wanna ride one of those old school bikes. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Huh? Mm. I mean, I think it's it's remarkable that how fast the technology mm. is coming on. It is and, moving fast. And you mentioned Shimano there. Now Shimano mm. actually a huge company in terms mm. of fishing wheels. Word on the street is they're gonna bring e-bike te technology to, to the fishing wheels. <laughs> Just like pulling in like two ton <laughs> carp. Oh my God! Yeah, man, it's coming. It all man. crosses over, big market, this sort of business. <laughs> but no, it does look really tidy. So now we've got a question from Ashley Holland. Mm -hmm. And he says, any news from Shimano on a new motor, which pieces in rather mm -hmm. neatly to what I was saying about the fishing game, I think. Exactly, well, <laughs> I've not, to be fair, heard any news on a new Shimano motor. Uh, the, the Shimano E8000 motor as it is, is pretty dialed. Um, obviously Shimano keep constantly updating the motor and the interface via the app. So I don't think it's gonna be anytime soon a new motor coming from Shimano, but obviously they just released, released the uh, internal battery. So that's mm. quite a big thing for them. And I think a new motor possibly could be on the way, but it's a way off. Yeah, I would I say, you know, traditionally, mm -hmm. I feel that your North American companies, say your Shimano, so you're, so you're SRAM and you're Specialized. Mm -hmm. They have always been incredibly good for innovation in terms of mountain bikes. Yeah. Shimano, often later to the party, mm -hmm. but they tend to get it yeah. bang on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, think mm -hmm. of like your one by drive trains, yeah. your, you know, so many things. Mm -hmm. So Shimano, if you're looking for someone that's gonna be reactive to an industry, mm -hmm. forget it. If you're gonna look at someone that's gonna set the standard maybe 18 months later, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then they're, they're your I think that's kind of what they've done. You exactly hit the nail on the head there. They've, with their E8000 and the E7000 motor. Amazing motors, really reliable. Um, yeah, definitely ticks all the boxes. But they definitely don't mind coming late to the party. Exactly. Because when they do, they're dressed to the absolute nines, you know what I mean? <laughs> they're looking pretty good. So um, next we have a question from mm -hmm. Philip Kellner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Philip Kellner. And he says, what setting do I need to have on mission control to even out the weight balance on a regular stump jumper? Mm -hmm. Approximate number would help. I'm a little bit confused by this yeah. question. To be so, so you're saying that you want to set your mission control to match the stump jumper like a standard mountain bike. Mm. Um, so what would people normally, when, when I said, if I said what's mission control, what would you, what would you normally? So mission control is basically the standard uh, app from Specialized and the normal settings around 30% for eco, 60% for trail, and then you had 100% assist for mm -hmm. turbo. Um, and I'm guessing you're trying to find out which numbers you should yeah. put in to feel kind of like your standard mountain bike. But I think it's something that you need to do on the trails that you're riding. I don't know how heavy you are. I don't know your bike setup. I don't know how you like to ride. I think that's a good thing about the Specialized app is actually you can dial that thing in on the fly to assist you and get the bike feeling how you want to and make sure you're getting the right workout yourself. You know, I don't know how fit you are, as well as just where you ride. There's so yes, many different variables tone, tone. coming into it. Yeah, and I think that's, as I say, the good thing about it, just do it on the trail and mm. dial it in. Yeah, because some people I think expect a bike to be 
you know, gentle assistance throughout the day. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, I know people that ride e-bikes mm -hmm. almost want that moto trials experience. Exactly, yeah. Just bab -bab, yeah, oh, like yeah. real technical, Hello. sharp, punchy yeah. climbs. Mm -hmm. But then you got those people who want to ride all day with a minimal exactly. assistance to get a big workout. So yeah. it's impossible for me to say I'm afraid. Yeah, so we'll move on to a question from Stephen R. And he says, with the release of the new Bosch motor, mm -hmm. there are some bargains on the older generation. I scored a brand new 27, 2017 Lombardo E. Sempion. Nice. Did I say that right? Sem Sempion. Sempion. Oh, nice. <laughs> Three for very little money. My problem is this bike is very 2017 mm -hmm. or, tw or even 2016 in terms right. of geometry. Mm -hmm. Can you please help me pimp my ride? Can I transform the 60? 7.5 head angle into a modern 66 by firing on by firing my Fox 160 mil original 140 front and back. Now we talk about the adverse effects and you know think about special headsets. You know what can he do more at the front of the bike to change to change the geometry? Well, obviously, straight off the top of my head, obviously fitting a longer fork is going to slack in the head angle off. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm just going to raise your bottom bracket as well. Yeah. Um, on the rear, what can you do to... I mean, it depends. You can get things like offset bushings, mm -hmm. which can take as much as, as a degree. Yeah, of course. Um, it's really, when you think about your changing your fork length, um, the important measurement is your axle to crown. Right. Because you might talk about 160, 160 mil fork, mm -hmm. but in recent years, they've actually minimized or reduced that so you can get more travel for right. the same height. Okay. So sometimes people think going to a longer travel fork is going to bump up 20 mil. Right. But actually the axle to crown difference might be 10 mil. Right. Do you know so what I mean? Actually, yeah. And so it's really yeah. worth looking at how mm. to maximize your travel, which I kind of be a good or a bad thing. Yeah. Um, you can also get a company called Reverse Components have actually just released this headset cup. Right. Which basically sits below your normal headset mm -hmm. and it lifts up the the frame basically okay. on the fork. Oh, right. So that will rake out the bike further. Admittedly, that's quite cool, isn't it? But it is, it is a really cheap way to at least How experiment. Much is that it's like 15 quid. Is it? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it, it is, it is pretty good. Mm -hmm. You'd even see actually specialized were doing that when they took, we're going from 650B29 a couple of years ago. Yeah. That's when the first idea started. Mm -hmm. And if you're eagle eyed, you will see some EWS riders still wanting it to this day. Really? Yeah, just to fine tune their geometry. I think Cannondale did it as well on one of their jump bikes. They had a problem with the crown not clearing the down tube mm -hmm. for like when riders were doing like X ups and bar spins and mm -hmm. things. So they added like a spacer on the bottom of the headset cup just to, to push it away to make yeah. the head tube essentially longer. I'm guessing that's a similar kind of thing. Yeah, but, totally. You yeah. can also get. Um, yeah, I mean, offset bushings are really good as well. Right. Because they're actually gonna, gonna lower stuff out. The problem is when you just do something at the front end, mm -hmm. it kind of puts the bike on stilts mm -hmm. and you can kind of fall behind the front right. end a bit. But when you go offset bushings, it will it will hunker down the center of the bike, which is largely you know, kind of mm -hmm. where your weight is. It's, course, it's, yeah. it's where you ride and, and it really does make a difference. Does there. it? And, and he mentioned, as well. cool, that does sound a good option. He mentioned about um, angle sets as well. So the headsets with the offset, Yes. How do they work? So the angle set, so instead of it going straight through on the steering axis, mm -hmm. it actually tilts it so it brings the top of the head, um, the steerer closer to the rider, right. so further back, mm -hmm. and the front the front part forward. So it actually sets it back. Right. So the, the steering, the steerer tube isn't running parallel within the head tube anymore. Right. It's actually running with the glue back. Okay. It can be a bit finickety, mm -hmm. um, especially with um, really hard riding. And often, I mean, a bit of a tip if, if you do go down this route, people put them in with a really big press. Right. But the problem is, a press, even the really good ones, will turn the cup slightly okay. as you go in, so it goes off axis. Mm. So you actually want to do it very patiently with a toffee hammer. Really? Just mark up your frame, yeah. get it absolutely square, and just work it around. Tap, 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 tap. Nice. Same on the other side. Mm. Um, and you will see that that's very prevalent on World Cups, especially a couple of years ago yeah. when people were really fighting to get their bikes up to the geometry. Down. So, yeah, a few options there. It sounds like you can definitely get that bike dialed into some new school geometry. But that's it for this week's show. Don't forget, if you guys have got a question you want to ask us here on EMBN, hashtag ask EMBN, drop your question in the comments box below and we'll get back to you. Big thanks to Henry for joining yeah, it's me today. it a pleasure. Thank you for having me. You've enjoyed it? Cool. I've learned a lot. I've got a thorough schooling. There you go. Uh, don't forget, if you want to stick around, there's this awesome video by Steve about checking the right size e-bike out for you down here. Yeah, actually, you did that video which came out quite recently mm -hmm. about the importance of sag and yeah. suspension. A lot of our questions today mm -hmm. have been about geometry exactly. and suspension. Mm -hmm. But getting a sag, getting your sag right is such an important standpoint. So click down there for that mm -hmm. one. 
Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, drop some comments in the box below, and don't forget to click the glow in the middle to subscribe to EMBN, and we'll see you next week. Cheers, guys.